Hi everybody, today I'm going to share with you five reads that you can consider to be part of your 2022 portfolio. For this video, I'll talk about how these five reads can form a portfolio by itself to complement one another. And I'll not dwell into too much detail on the individual reads as I've done out a separate analysis on these reads individually on a separate video where you can refer back to my YouTube channel. So the first read you can consider to be part of portfolio is Ascender Reach, which happened to be the largest industrial REITs listed in Singapore. And it also have the most number of properties among all the 40 REITs listed in Singapore. It has total 220 properties as of 31st of December. Ascender's property are in the developed country like Singapore, Australia, UK and Europe and US. And when it comes to industrial risk, practically there are four main categories. One is called a business space, industrial building, logistics, and data center. And ascenders have all these four sub-asset class for the industrial risk in the risk by itself. So in the national, when you invest in ascender risk, they are practically invest in all the four main sub-asset class for uh, industrial risk and they are scattered around the main developed market in the world. And let's look at the financial metric of Ascenders, which is currently standing at around 37.4%. And due to its size by itself is 16 billion in property, if that here can be up to 4.2 billion when it hit a gearing of 50%. However, I'm not expect Ascender to go in and stretch their debt pay room to all the way 50%. But one thing to point out is size really matter when it comes to risk investment. Because of their size, even with the gain now of 37.4, if they were to hit the gain, let's say about 40%, they still have a debt headroom of about $1 billion, which means that with the $1 billion, they can buy quite a fair number of properties through debt financing without even doing equity fundraising. And one thing I like about Ascender is we look at their track record on how they manage their gain ratio is they constantly maintain it at a pretty healthy range. And you didn't see that since IPO to today, their gain ratio actually crossed 40%. So this is one of the plus points that I applied as senders. They did not go and over gear their properties to achieve better returns on that. One of the key parameters when I look at risk is their DPU. Growth. When a rich DPU grow over time, indirectly you owe, means that their share price will also appreciate over time. So let's look at Ascender DPU history. You can see that Ascender DPU have been growing over the years. However, that is too deep. One dip is during the global financial crisis, and the other dip is during the COVID nineteen period. Let's look at the two thousand nine global financial crisis. It have dropped, but that one is not really a fault on Ascender by itself it is because of the global financial crisis. Businesses are mainly affected. And of all the risks listed in Singapore, based on my knowledge, there's only two risks that didn't drop their DPU during the 2008 global financial crisis. So Ascender happened to be not the two of them. But however, after the global financial crisis, did they manage to recover? From the DPU trend, you can see that they have managed to recover their DPU and they can even achieve a higher DPU then the global financial crisis DPU. However, you see that there's a drop in DPU in uh, FY2019. Do take note because this is talk about the changing of financial reporting. It is mainly three quarter of dividend. It is not four quarter where compared to the rest is four quarter. Thus, it is lower. But however, you have to do a projection. Actually, that there's a still a dip in DPU. But you can see the dip in DPU over these two financial years. One of the main reasons is mainly due to COVID. Did they have recovered as of now? From the first half DPU, you look at it, it's 7.66. If I were to project double it, it will be definitely higher than FY2020. Indirectly means that their DPU has started to go back on the recovery phase again. And one thing to take note of, you can see that financial year 0203, that's where their DPU they pay out is 7.63 cents. And you look at the first half DPU is 7.66 cents. 
So do take note, this is one full year and this is only six months. So what does that mean to you as an investor? It means that if you were to buy a standard receipt IPO and hold it under two days, your dividend have increased 100%. With that means that the share price definitely at current juncture will definitely be much, much higher than the IPO price. So it means that you'll make a capital gain and also a dividend growth over a long-term period. Let's look at the share price of Ascendant in the past two years over the COVID period. They have actually recovered very fast after they hit the bottom of $2.22. However, lately, all the industry REITs are facing some weaknesses in price and Ascendant REITs have started to drop after they hit the peak of $3.65 last year, August. This may also mean that it can be an opportunity for those longer-term investors to accumulate ascenders at a more attractive price. Let's look at ascender price since IPO. You can see this is the peak they hit before the market crash in the global financial crisis. And after the COVID, they actually have hit an even higher price than the 2008 peak. So this means that the risk are able to recover and go higher than the GFC price. As you may be aware that some of the risks that go through the financial, growth financial crisis and up to today, they have not recovered back to their highest price they hit in 2008 growth financial crisis. So this is another key parameter I look at on risks. Can they manage to go higher than their previous high? Let's move on to look at the second risk. The second risk is also an industrial risk which is Maple Tree Logistics Trust. This Maple Tree Logistics Trust, as most of you are aware, is on e-commerce and is an Asia-focused logistics trust. When it comes to logistics, it's referred to e-commerce. And to me, it's one of the key growth engine for industrial rich in the future. Although ascenders have logistics asset in them, but no thing not ascenders, logistics assets are focused on developed market. But what about Maple Tree asset? They have close to 180 properties and their key focus is in the Asia Pacific region. So from this chart, you can see from here that their Singapore weightage is only about 22% in terms of asset and their Australia weightage is about 7%. These two countries may have certain form of overlap with ascenders. However, the rest of the asset, which form out the main bulk, like Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, China, Malaysia, Vietnam, and India. All these are the locations in the Asia region where ascenders do not have a reach on that. So Maple Tree Logistics Trust has ascenders so that they can put together to complement one another so that you will have an industrial reach that cover practically the world and with also a logistics focus globally. But one thing to take note about the Maple Tree Logistics Trust, as you can see, their gearing is 39.1%, despite they have done a equity fundraising recently to do a massive big acquisition. Before their acquisition, their gearing is 39%. And we have known that Maple Tree Logistics Trust for 2020 and 2021, they have both done billion dollars of acquisition and they have done equity fundraising for these two consecutive years to help them to acquire more properties. And their gearing is still maintained at around 39%. And Maple Tree Logic Trust, their unwritten mandate is their gearing will not cross 40%, uh, similar to extenders. So that may also mean that if this year 2022, if Maple Tree Logic Trust were to repeat a major big acquisition, just like what they do in 2021 and 2020, you should also expect certain form of equity fundraising to happen again. However, do think of during the past two years, they do the equity fundraising. Is it a creative DPU, a creative MPI, a creative task? If you didn't really participate in the equity fundraising, you still don't really lose out in that because your DPU will still go up. However, if you can participate, your DPU, will, your, your dividend will be even more. So this is one point in the take note of Maple Tree Logistics Trust. And let's look at their DPU growth. Their DPU since IPO in 2005 have been growing steadily, except for the dip during the global financial crisis where they suffer the same fate as ascenders. I think all the industry suffered the same fate during that period. 
let's look at the COVID-19 period where actually they are not affected as we know that e-commerce indirectly benefit from the COVID and actually their dividend have go up higher. Let's look at the share price. The share price have recovered very fast to $2.21 in August 2020, but you also have shown some weakness recently as this is an industrial-wide phenomenon where all the industry is facing the same thing. But to me, if you are looking at longer term, expect and you have faith in this risk, this may be also an opportunity for you to look at it and it may be also an opportunity for you to accumulate for long term. Let's look at the price of this IPO to today. You can see this is the peak it hit at 2000 growth financial crisis. And as of now, they have recovered and are much higher than the GFC price. So this is one of the key things I love about Maple Tree Logistic Trust is they're able to recover from the growth financial crisis and their price went even higher than the peak they hit in 2008. And the plus one is that dividend is growing and they are in the sector called the logistics side, which in the area is e-commerce, will be definitely be the next growing sector in the future. Now let's move on to the third risk. The third risk will be more towards a defensive risk. It is a healthcare risk. And when it comes to healthcare risk, I'm talking about Parkway Life Risk. Parkway Life Risk start with only three hospitals in Singapore, start with a pure Singapore play risk and start to diversify overseas. And they went to Japan and currently he have about 55 properties with three in Singapore, 51 in Japan and one in Malaysia. You can see that their revenue generated about six, close to 60% from the three hospitals in Singapore, followed by Japan that contribute the 40% on that. This is the three hospitals they have in Singapore, which is the Glen Eagle, Mount E, and also the Parkway East Hospital. And for their Japan property, you can see that it is scattered around the four main islands in Japan. And one thing I like about Parkway Life is the rental income they collected don't drop and only go up. For example, the Singapore Tree Hospital, they have signed a 15-year lease, which come with a escalating rental income. And what about the property in Japan? You can see that most of their property in Japan, they are, have up only rental review provisions. Means that the downside risk is protected. So you just need to imagine that if you are renting your house to someone and for long term, and you know that your rental income will only go up despite market conditions. The worst case is stay flat. It will not drop. Would you have a peace of mind of renting out your properties? Similarly for Parkway Life, this is what the rental income they collected. So indirectly means as an investor for you, it will mean that your dividend will only go up. And this is a Malaysian property. It's a very small property. So practically, I don't take that into consideration as it don't have any much significant impact to the risk. So let's look at their balance sheets. Their gearing is in a pretty decent range is about 34.9%. This indirectly means that they can constantly buy nursing home in Japan. So this is their DPU track record. You can see that their DPU since they are listed in 2007 until today, it didn't drop. Despite it go through the global financial crisis and go through the COVID-19 pandemic, it didn't drop. Based on my understanding, this is the only risk left in Singapore that didn't have a dividend drop during the global financial crisis and also during the COVID-19 period. It is the last risk standing in Singapore that didn't have any dividend drop. And I hope that in future, they were able to maintain that record for a long, long time to go. Because of this track record, this will indirectly mean that the share price should go up over long term period. So this is a share price over the past two years where actually they have a dip in the COVID-19 where all the risk actually their share price is dip, but the recovery is very fast. And at current price, it actually is an all time high price. So this is the long term chart of the risk. You can see that to me, it looks like a growth stock chart, but however, it is a healthcare risk. Uh, why it can do that? It mainly contribute due to the asset they hold and also the uh, rental income they collect. Third is 
on a long term list and is on an escalating basis. But what would, is the key risk of this parkway life is they are considered relatively small compared to the other blue chip breeds that listed in SGX. If they would want to continue to grow, they may need to acquire Mount E Novena. But however, Mount E Novena is a bit too big for these breeds to acquire unless they do a very massive right issues. And this may be have a negative impact to the share price. Plus, if they are retiree, if they will do this, this right issues to acquire Mount E Novena, you may need to come up a significant amount of cash to subscribe for the issue. So this is one of the underlying risks. But over long term, if I look at it, if they were to acquire more in the middle, actually it's a good thing for investor on a long term basis. But in the short term side, there will be volatility involved. Okay, now let's look at risk number four. Risk number four to me will fall towards a recovery play. And the fourth risk is Escort Residence Trust. It is a hospitality risk. And we know that we are going for an endemic and VTL lane has started to form with more and more country. So hospitality risk with definite position for recovery. And why I prefer escort residence trust over the rest of the hospitality risk. The key reason is diversification. Diversification not only in terms of geographic location, is also in terms of their asset class. Let's look at the property of Escort Resident Trust, if have actually more than 90 over properties, this is outdated data. They have actually more than 90 over properties globally, where they include the US, Europe, and Asia Pacific region. And it has the most properties among all the hospitality trusts. In fact, you add up all the property, all the hospitality trusts have and compete with Escort, I think they are pretty on par. Another thing is their diversification on their asset class for the property. Uh, a lot of people have a conception that hospitality trust means hotel. But for escort residence trust, you can see that they have service apartment, they have hotel, they have rental housing, and they have student accommodation. So they are pretty well diversified in the asset class expect. And these two, the rental housing and the student accommodation, which actually is the growing part for Escort Residential Trust. It provides stability in their income. As we know that when you rent a house to stay, this is happening in Japan, usually you will stay for long term. And when students go to a university to study, they stay in a hostel, usually it will be for a few years. Compared to when you go to stay in a hotel room, usually it's about three to five days. Okay, so the turnover can be quite fast when you go to a hotel. So the income stability may not be there compared to rental housing and student accommodation. So they got one stabilizer in their portfolio and their hotel and their service residents can capitalize on the opening of the economy, on the growing up of business travel and also holiday travelers. This is why I like this week for recovery pay. And let's look at the price charge. The price charge for this week is pretty short. As in early 2020, they have merged with Ascendant Hospitality Trust, so we don't have a long-term price charge for this week. But we can see that the peak is about 138 before the COVID pandemic, and current price is around slightly above $1, which means that there is a big potential upside for the share price if the economy were to open up, if their dividend payout were to increase. So to me, this is, will be a more of a tactical play or a recovery play for part of your this portfolio. The last week will focus on retail and commercial buildings. And the risk I prefer for 2022 will be Maple Tree Commercial Trust. I believe more of you will be very familiar with Maple Tree Commercial Trust. It's a pure Singapore play risk that have the crown jewel like Vivo City and Maple Tree uh, Business City, and they have a very fantastic track records. However, at 31st of December, they have announced a merger between Maple Tree Commercial Trust and Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust. This has made some Maple Tree Commercial Trust unit holder not so happy with this merger. For me, I'm not going to discuss whether it's good for MCT holder, Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust unit holder. For me, I'll look at the merger. If I do not have this bridge 
it is a good risk for me to buy for 2022. So this is what I for me focus on. As to me, the merger is more likely a done deal already. Whether we like it or we don't like it, high chance you will still go through. This will be the asset after the merger where we can see Singapore will take about 50%, followed by Hong Kong, China, Japan, and Korea. So this bridge will focus on the Pan-Asia region where Festival Walk contribute about 26%, followed by Vivo City 18%, and Maple Tree Business City 20%. This will be the three key assets under the new merger, which we're learning called Impact. One negative thing about the merger is a lot of people are concerned about the lease balance for Festival Walk. Uh, to me, I don't think that is really a big concern. One of the negative about the merger is after the merge, the gain for Maple Tree Commercial Trust will increase to 39.2%. If Maple Tree Commercial Trust were to go and acquire another property after the merger, they may need certain form of equity fundraising. But based on what Maple Tree Commercial Trust Risk Manager has always mentioned that they will only look for property that is yield accretive, DPU accretive, and MPI accretive before they take action to do acquisition. Thus, even when they do an equity fundraising, if the property is fulfilled these three criteria, it is actually a good buy. And even if you didn't really subscribe for it, uh, you see your DPU are unlikely to drop as the acquisition itself is DPU accretive and year accretive. So this will not be a major concern on that. And if you're able to subscribe, I always recommend maybe you want to subscribe more. The good part about the merger is when it comes to risk investing, I always emphasize on that size really matters a lot. When you go to the international market to compete for properties, you really need to have the size, the muscle for you to get a bet, big deals and for you to negotiate a better terms and condition on the financing rate. So the merger of that to make this rate become the seventh largest risk in Asia Pacific is a good move for the merger. After the merger, the management fee structure will be similar to what Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust have been doing. And this is to me is one of the best management fee structure among all the 40 risks in Singapore. It is really an alignment of the risk manager interest with investor interest, especially the perform fee portion. It means that the risk manager will only get perform fees if my DPU go up. That means if I have a drop in my DPU, the manager will not have perform fees. So as a risk manager, they will definitely want to get the perform fees. So they'll definitely have to work hard for it to make sure that my DPU will go up. So this is really a, a very good alignment of interest between investor and risk manager. Uh, in the past, Maple Tree Commercial Trust, their fee structure is not this way and they already performed so well. So with the change in this structure, I believe they may need to even perform even better. So this is a good thing for investor like me. And the, the acquisition is actually a DPU equity, NAV equity acquisition, which fulfill what the risk manager always say when they want to do any acquisition. So the merger actually is actually DPU equity and NAV equity. So let's look at the price performance. Investor think otherwise on the merger and this explains why the share price had dropped recently due to the merger. And at one point it had dropped to $1.80, which is the price equal to NAV. Do take note, Maple Tree Commercial Trust always trade at a premium. However, after the merger is announced, because Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust is trading at a discount, price to NAV have dropped almost to one. But going forward, I will believe that this risk is expected to trade in a premium over the long-term period. And thus, I feel that it may be also a good opportunity for us to look at it and also accumulate over the long-term. This is a price track record for the risk since IPO to, to today. You can see that it has suffered a drastic drop during COVID-19, but didn't really recover. One of the key reasons because they are office and retail business or that is Singapore play. And we know that during the circuit breaker during the COVID period, our work from home become a norm and shopping malls are forced to close. And this will definitely affect the retail and the office side. 
and thus this explain why the share price didn't able to recover compared to the industrial risk. This is not really the risk measure for it's actually the external factor on that. And we know that COVID one day will show go over. Thus, I think it's something that you can consider for yourself to position for the recovery phase going forward. So this is the five risks that you can consider for your 2022 portfolio. And we have industrial side, we have ascender risks that take care of the developed market and it practically have all the asset class of uh, industrial risk required. Plus a maple tree logic trust to help to fill up the gap on the Asia Pacific region on the logic side. And we have Parkway Life, which is a defensive risk. It's a healthcare risk. We have a very good track records since IPO to today. And Escort Residential Trust is more for a recovery play. And sometimes I'll, I'll say that it's more for a tactical play to ride on the opening of global travel. And Maple Tree Commercial Trust is focused on retail and office and is on a pan-Asia region. So this will indirectly also miss for recovery play also as retail and office will be also positioned for recovery play. And for me, the current price range for Maple Tree Commercial Trust look attractive if you are looking at long-term time horizon. So this is the five risks that you can consider to be part of your 2022 portfolio. And also do remember to do your own due diligence analysis on that also. That's all I have to share with you today. And if you feel that this video has benefit you, do remember to like and share this video. And also do remember to leave your comment below to let me know what you think. Lastly, do remember to subscribe and press the bell button so that you'll be notified on my next video. I shall see you in my next video. Bye-bye.